having allowed us to come to interact with you as students of letters and thank the leadership of the region Koketso here uh, who has uh, worked very tirelessly with the activists in UJ to try and campaign for our victory on Wednesday. We must not make a mistake, fellow students, of turning this campus yellow. Yeah. This campus must remain red. <laughs> this SRC that is outgoing has fought tirelessly to make sure that there is backup electricity across the university. It has made sure when there were serious water problems that the management intervenes in the best interest of the students. But you must remember that all of you as young people, you are part of a single generation. Do not dislodge yourselves from your generational collective. There is a big wave across South Africa where the universities are turning red. Even the universities that were thought not to be aligned with the mission of economic freedom in our lifetime are now following your example. So it means you have set an example long before it was fashionable. And now the rest of campuses in South Africa are following your example. The other day, the students on the other side at Fitz University followed your example and inaugurated an EFFSC SRC because you started by doing it. The students of University of Cape Town as well voted the EFFSC in big numbers. The students of Tswan University of Technology did the same. The students of the University of Pretoria did the same. The students of DUT did the same. The students of MUT did the same. The students of Unilin did the same. The students of the University of Free State did the same. Because the students of University of Johannesburg led by example. The other day, the Vale University of Technology also joined. So you cannot break ranks from your generational mission. What are we doing? We are announcing as young people that 2024 is going to be our 1994. What is our mission? The mission is very simple. Our parents in 1994 attained political freedom but political freedom without economic freedom is useless so we are a generation that says we are not going to accept political rights that cannot give us economic freedom we are not going to be at the same mercy of exploiters thieves in yellow t-shirts who go to parliament to line up for tenders and afternoon naps. Yeah. We are a generation that is going to demand economic freedom and we want economic freedom in our lifetime. Our children must be better. Our children must live in a South Africa where banks will not discriminate against them because they come from townships. Yeah. So let us define what is economic freedom. What do we mean by economic freedom? Economic freedom begins with the struggle for the land. The reason many of us have no access to affordable residences across Auckland Park, Bramfontein, is because as black people, we don't have the land. The land begins with residential settlement. In the townships where we come from, as you are all aware, we live in spaceless conditions on top of each other, sharing small yards in the houses and in the backyards. One family instituting between 15 to 20 people in a small 150 square meter yard. If it's big, it will be 300 square meter yard.
But when you go to the suburbs, you find big yards of families of four, two parents and two children of white people. That's why the children of black people in the townships play on the streets because there's not enough space in the yards. When you go to the suburbs, on the streets playing soccer because they've got enough big yards for swimming pools, jumping castles, and the rest of the resources. They are able to live in comfortable spaces. That's why I must sit stressed. How Runa were stressed people because we live in congested areas without the mental space to breathe. I mislead you, African child, that the land is not important. You as educated young people, as young intellectuals, you've got to be smarter, not to be misled about the significance of the land. The land is everything. Even if you believe in the fourth industrial revolution, the resources for the fourth industrial revolution come from the earth. The robots that are going to substitute some of the industries, they are not from space. They come from the minerals beneath the soil. The internet capacity to have cloud storage is based on the types of machinery that must come and be based on the land. So the land is everything. Even if you say, me, I just want a saloon to do hairdressing and manicure and pedicure. Uka se ari saloon on the sky. You need the land. And here is the significance of the land. Nobody owns a factory of land. That's why the EFF says the land must be expropriated without being paid for, but for equal redistribution. So Mahuasca Taba, if they are committed to this continent, if they love staying in this continent, they cannot hate the people of this continent. If they love this continent, if they want to be in this place, they must be committed to the people of this place. So, the land does not come from some factory. How na malume, kapo abuti, kapo me, wa mutu mo, wa karing, gubo, ba ona effect yo wenzu mshaba. Umshaba, ugankulungulu, sonke su tolela, sonke si zoushia la. Let us learn to share the land. Apologize. The fees must fall generation made the greatest, most intelligent argument that education must be free. Because education has nothing to do with how much you've got in your pocket. Ukakenakara exam room. Unali hundred thousand in your bank account. In your pocket, in your card. Even if you put it in your school bag. Ha exam e better. It's low better. Ah, uh, we exam the exam what we are Louis Vuitton or ungene ne Dickies. We go to say the non-exceni, no mubu pussy busy, no mubu shum dogo. But my exam is shy, yoksha. All of us here, we remember the classrooms we were in in matric. There were black young. People that were probably smarter than us, that were more disciplined, that were working hard. They are not in the universities, not because they're not smart, but because they don't have the money to come and study at UJ. But education has nothing to do with man. Hey, there is a team on Saturday that won some cup. Let me tell you about that team. So that team was competing. Listen to this analogy. They were Orlando Pirates was playing against Sundowns. Sundowns is the cheese boy. Baba talwa chelete e palangya Pirates. Maru once again in the field. Talente hai shom pichelete. It's very important.
important. Argentina that won the World Cup last year. It's a team from South America with the same problems that define South Africa. High levels of youth unemployment, underdevelopment. They are a developing country, properly underdeveloped in the South of America. Argentina. But Argentina went to the finals with one of the richest nations in Europe, France. Maraba kena inside. Talente hai kompi chelete. But here is what baffles me. All those young people, including the Sundowns and the French team, even when they lose, they get paid. The Springbok is touring the world now in a Rugby World Cup. There's no one who's going to leave America and come save you from your degradation. Why? Because when they look at the profile of the country, they're like, a lot of people keep money in the bank who are rich. Why will I live there and do what the rich people of South Africa are not doing? And you know why they keep a lot of money in the bank? They don't believe in the possibilities of this country. So, if they build factories, particularly in import substitution relevant products, everything we are wearing here now comes from outside South Africa. All our cell phones, all our laptops, t-shirts, banner, everything comes from South Africa. <laughs> if if you think I'm joking, Kim mewa manga sebeta modi fatu gudi produce one day. Kim li di underpen, ta di underpen, di twa China. So they can't build factories. The Oppenheimers won't build factories. The Ruperts and all these big guys, they won't invest because they don't believe in the possibilities of this country. If they build a factory. And in their head, they think any time it can go wrong, any time the country can collapse, then they can't pick up a factory and go to Dubai. They can't pick up a factory and go to Australia. So they keep a money, they keep a lot of money in the bank, so that if in any way they doubt that something wrong is going to happen, it's one-way flight ticket to Australia. But the money is in the bank. That is the truth. South Africa's government budgets over a trillion rands annually. And they spend majority of that money in goods and services, in salaries, in service delivery. Where do they bank this money? They bank it in the white-dominated banks, white-owned banks of South Africa. Your money, your tax money from VAT, when you buy bread, you are a taxpayer. As long as you buy anything in South Africa, you are a taxpayer. You are not a taxpayer by only being a person from whom a salary, a tax is deducted from their salary. You are a taxpayer merely by participating in the buying of goods and services in South Africa. But that money is in the banks, your money. But if you live here with a brilliant business idea, you won't get funding from Standard Bank. I don't care how brilliant your business is. Merely because you are black, you won't get funding from Standard Bank, FNB, APSA, all those banks. They totally discriminate against black people and I just call it, we can't give you because you don't have surety. When my parents don't have the land. When my parents don't even own the house that they are living in. We need a bank that is not going to discriminate against black people. That's why we need a state bank. And we need a state bank which is going to waste money on black talent. The same way white banks waste money on those white kids who when you live here, you are going to report to them. Some of them, you are more educated than them. Even the ones that you are educated equally to, they will earn more money than you. Simply because they are white. This is the truth. All of those young people inside that team, 
Even the ones that are sitting on the bench are getting paid. They are paid because they are talented. The, the country is able to accept that logic. If they are paid because of their talent in soccer, in rugby, how much more with your talent for mathematics? How much more with your talent for accounting, for history, for engineering? How much more with a talent that is academic? That's what fees must fall. In essence, was you should be paid for being smart. You should be paid because your talent won't end when you are 34. Once you graduate here with an engineering degree, it's a benefit to the whole. You not the other way around. You chose us as a smart, talented young black woman. We are proud. We are going to give you a salary for the rest of your time here just for choosing us and we are recognizing your talent students should be paid merely for being students you should get your allowance for accommodation you should get your allowance for entertainment you should get your allowance for academic activities if we can accept that those in sports can get paid for talent. We must accept that we must pay those who are academically talented. A lot of people go around asking us about the economics of that. And we have always consistently explained we are sitting on some of the richest minerals in the world. Over 70 Maybe even 80% of the world's platinum runs between South Africa and Zimbabwe. Yeah. Runs between South Africa and Zimbabwe. We have the greatest gold mines in the world. Why are those minerals benefiting the few fantonders of the world? Why are they not the wealth that we must build powerful academic institutions in which Oh, the only thing you must demonstrate is academic potential. Yeah. The only thing you must demonstrate is academic talent. I used to teach there at Vets for a very brief period. So when you teach, I guess you mark people. Hey, I used to think hey, white people are smart, naturally. Ha! Kaya magas kripi sa pandonde. Yes, young Funan and you would across it twenty per cent. Then it's tin tit and Funama Max and Because education is not the respecter of the color of the skin, yes. education is not the respecter of your gender. Every metric results that are announced nationally in the public education system, do you know who are the best performers? A girl child. Because education does not care. must fight for better living conditions for students. I'm here to request you to give them another chance. They must continue the fight. But if we all in South Africa vote for the EFFSC, we're going to take over the national SRC called SAUS. Then we can go and heal that rough skin of a blade in Zimanda with proper escamela. At the moment that Saus is in the hands of those selfish careerist kids of the ANC who are in SRC for careerism. They are not in SRC for the collective interest of the students. They want careers. But they get proximus to the ministers, the MECs, even the leaders of state-owned companies. This SRC of the EFFSC must fight for the collective interest of the students. We must fight that campus health must be free. Campus health must be free and the clinics in campus must open 24 hours. And if they can give us condoms for free, they must give us sanitary towels for free. 
there is a condom for free, there must be a sanitary towel for free. We must fight for proper conditions for academic activities. There must be high speed, high speed internet everywhere, including here in the parking lot, in the buses, in the bathrooms, everywhere. Because we're, we're in a university. We're in a university. As a fact, Trintwe, it's a university. We're here to engage in ideas. I bet idea it's not only anywhere. Idea I hate to rugo guy. We got really busy to push, to push, to push in a club. If you get idea, you are able to scribble it down and go back and expand on it. There must be free, high speed internet everywhere. Our SRC must fight for that. Protest against the fees. And we know. The, the corruption associated with NSFAS. Abaswa be bautwa chelete yau educator banaba school. Allowances are always late because of the corruption of NSFAS. Thirty years. Why it's about thirty years? Where is it thirty years? Guys, thirty years is too long. Mutwa thirty years udula ha hai. Any time from now. 30 years, majority of you here were not born in 94. You were born after 94. You should be at least be born in 99 or the year 2000. Some of you even 2001 and 2002. This, even 2004. 2005. I was doing my first year in 2004 at Vits when I you were being born. That's how long the ANC government has been in charge of the country. You cannot allow this country in 2024 to fall in the same hands of the people. We must say it is enough. Our future is not being prepared. They are busy eating. We, live, we are with them there in parliament. I've been in that parliament since in my 20s. All we found in that parliament, half the time, sugar diabetes, little high blood. Parliament seats in terms of the National Assembly at 2 o'clock. Hi, man, on a long corner. Hey, I'm going to get to my man. I'm going to be to get a little bit of 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 a little but ANC, they go to parliament and then they sleep. But so how this cars are tender. They are not there in parliament preparing you a future. Most of them have no idea how to solve the problems of South Africa. None of them. Guys, ask yourself a simple question. We know why Mark Zuckerberg is rich. Mark Zuckerberg invented Facebook. And then ultimately, he owns WhatsApp and Instagram. Again, we know why the owners of Apple are rich. Because we see their products on the shelves. We see their products on the shelves. Why is Ramaphosa rich? But is Ramaphosa. Hey, we have been sold lies for a very long time. If Basha Lenga Basal Betu, Asna Fum would Basha Lenga. Ramaphosa is rich because he produces what? We need to end the mediocrity of BEE. Because BEE, they want shares in already established companies.
So Ramaphosa is rich because he's got shares in McDonald's. But wow. Ramaphosa did not invent a beggar. Even a McDonald's, it's American. I'm saying to you, you must not forget. You must not lead your life thinking that you are not part of the future of this country. They leave this campus, they know that freedom is in my hands. I am the freedom that I have been looking for. I am the CEO that must provide jobs. I am the CEO that must solve the energy problems of this country. Black child, open your brain. Make sure that you are not enticed by food parcel. You can't be a generation that sells a vote. You can't be a generation that says t-shirt in exchange for vote. Don't let anybody intellectually undermine you like that. It is the greatest intellectual insult. A vote must be based on a proposition about the future. What is your program of action? That's what the vote means. And we must carry this intellectual project even when we are at home, even when we are with our people at home, in our communities, in our villages. So, we are requesting, get in your WhatsApp groups, get in your Twitter, on your Facebook, before you even leave here. Help us to spread this gospel. On Wednesday, we are voting the EFFSC. It must be so fashionable. We must make sure that it becomes so fashionable to vote the EFF that even when your boyfriend at low checker after the class, what a baby, before you get a kiss, who are you voting for? That's how fashionable it must be. Because it's cut some yellow t shirts. If we do not beat up the yellow t shirts in campus, they are going to come back in 2024 and it will be business as usual. You must make it fashionable to vote for the EFFSC, all the corners of the University of Johannesburg. We are requesting give the EFFSC another chance in the Student Representative Council. In APK, in Dwaranfontein, in Soweto, let us declare these campuses to be campuses for the red economic emancipation movement. Let us declare them campuses of the EFF. So we are depending on you to spread the message. Spread it everywhere. And remember, every vote count. Every vote count. So let me see the hands of all those who are voting the EFFSC on Wednesday. Come on.